transforming a beautiful portrait into a vector illustration is amazing that doesn't require outstanding drawing skills and can give you a great final piece of art. Finally, we are on the verge of this long vector portrait illustration tutorial. We will conclude this three parts of the tutorial by shading and highlighting skin and hair. If you didn't watch the previous tutorials of the series, then there are cards popping up in the upper right corner. Also, there are links in the description. I recommend you watch them first to understand this video better. So let's start. Select the pencil tool and remove the stroke property. Select a darker shade of the skin tone from the skin tone color palette. I created this skin tone swatch for this drawing. If you need this skin tone swatch, there is a link in the description, you can download it from there. Now I hide the skin layer and unhide the second layer from the bottom. This is a skin shaded layer. I have a separate video about how to find shadows from a photograph. There is a card popping up in the upper right corner. You can watch that video to learn how to find shadows and highlights from a photograph. I select the immediate darker shade of the skin tone from the swatch panel. Then I follow the skin shading layer and start shading the skin. Now I unhide the skin layer, go to edit, then edit colors and then recolor artwork. I adjust the shade color as per my preference compared with the skin tone. Then I lock the layer and create a new layer above this one. Then I hide both the immediate bottom layers so that I can see the shaded photograph for further shading. Then I select another shade from the swatch panel and start shadowing. I put the below layer on outline mode so that I can see the area I have already covered with the last shade and I unite the vector out of that layer from the pathfinder panel to avoid any confusion. This way I add shadow to the skin and adjust the shadow color with the help of recolor artwork. I made a shortcut F2 for recolor artwork. That is why you are not seeing me going to the menu and selecting edit, edit colors and then recolor artwork.
Now above all the shadow layers I create a new layer and start highlighting. Most of the time I keep the opacity 50% and put another layer of the color on the top of it. Now I do some final touch up with shadow and highlights wherever I need. Now it's time for hair highlights. Above everything I create a new layer for hair highlights. Make the eyedropper sample size 3x3 and take the highlighted sample from the original photo. Select the brush tool and custom brush. If you have watched my first video, you already know how did I create those custom brushes. Keep open the original photo for reference in the upper left corner. Make the sample color brighter and reduce the opacity to 10-20% and start drawing. Highlighting hair is a very tedious job as you have to follow the flow of the hair and draw almost every string of the hair. I change the opacity of the brush as I need. I change the brush stroke to thicker or thinner as and when I need it. Whenever I need a more precise reference, I hide all the layers but the original photo layer and paint the highlight.
step by step I make the highlight color brighter and reach up to almost white to make it more realistic. I change the color intensity by selecting layer wise with the help of recolor artwork. And at last it's done. I take a PNG of vector art and put it above an abstract background in Photoshop and this is the result. So that's it. I hope this content helped you and if yes, ensure to give a like and be a part of this creative world by subscribing to the channel. Also ring the bell to get notified for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Till then, keep learning.